So we've seen that adding randomness to our rule for generating the Koch curve yields these jagged shapes that look very much like perhaps a coastline or maybe the, uh, a ridge top, the outline that a bunch of mountains, uh, a mountain range would make. So if we take the same idea of generating a fractal at random, but apply that to a surface instead of a line, things get even more interesting. So you'll recall, first sticking with lines again for just a second, one of the variations on the Koch curve was to do this, to start with a line and then replace it with a line that bumps up and bumps down in this sort of square fashion. Well, what would happen if we did that not to a line, but to a surface? Well, here's an example of that. Let's see if I can get these all on the same screen. So we start not with a line, but with a square. So a surface in two dimensions. And then we bump it up and down. So there are two uh, sorry, so we, we divide this into 16 little squares, just like this gets divided into 1, 2, 3, 4. And then two of them we bump up by a certain amount. And then there are two sort of on the other side down here that are bumped down. It's a little bit hard to see maybe in this image, but the idea is take this square, put it into a grid of 16, pull two of them up, push two of those down. And then we could repeat that. We now have um, 16 surfaces instead of one, so 16 little squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, that one's up high, seven, that one's down low, and so on. But each of those we can divide into 16, bump two up, bump two down, and if we do that, we would get this. And if we did that a little bit more, we would end up with a shape like this. And it's a little hard to see in black and white on the screen, I'll show you a nicer, nicer image in a second. But um, starting to be a rather intricate surface. And so, but still, this is a regular fractal. There's no randomness in here. But we could imagine or wonder, well, what would happen if we put a little bit of randomness in this rule? There would be a lot of different ways we can imagine doing it. Some of the squares could go up. Some could go down. They could go up and down by different amounts. They don't have to go always the same amount. And it turns out that if you add, if you take a basic rule like this um, and add in a little bit of randomness in terms of what goes up, what goes down, how much things go up or down by, you can very quickly start generating remarkably realistic landscapes. In fact, this technique is used to generate um, very realistic looking but artificial landscapes in video games and movies and so on. The particulars of the algorithms, it's more complicated than this, but it's the same basic idea. Very often triangles or diamonds are used instead of squares. And then one would need to come up with some way to um, visualize this uh, so it looked not like a computer drawing, but with more realistic colors. But the basic idea is the same. It's an iterative process with a little bit of randomness in it. So what I want to do now is show you um, a simple program that will demonstrate a little bit of this for you um, online, and we'll make a few fractal landscapes. So here's a program that carries out a process similar to that which I just described in order to make uh, fractal terrains. So this is a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, the author is Xu Chao Xu, and um, the URL is here. And a reminder that there are links to this program and a lot of other programs in a separate section at the end of this unit. So um, I guess the first thing I'll do, let's change the Z scale. So I think what the Z scale does is set the um, maximum uh, variation in altitude. So if I change it down to zero, nothing happens. That's pretty boring. And as I increase it, I get um, taller and taller mountains and deeper and deeper valleys. Now, of course, if this were going to look like real mountains, one would need to color them and put some glaciers, some snow, some rocks, some trees, and maybe fill the valleys up with water or something. Um, and one would need to think about light and shading as well, where, where shadows were cast. <coughs> but this would give you the good basic, a good basic shape that you could then work with. Uh, the size determines the size of the grid. So there's 
28. Um, that takes a little bit longer. Every time I hit new, it will generate a new terrain for me. And just like um, every time I generated different random coat curves, we got a different shape because it's random. Uh, same sort of thing here. All sorts of different shapes and different terrains. Go down to uh, 64 again, so it's a little bit faster to work with. And decrease the Z a little bit. So the smoothness factor um, determines, I presume, I don't know exactly how this algorithm works, but I presume how high the bumps are at each step. So um, as I make it smoother, I get very little uh, terrain at all. It looks like the Midwest or a desert or something. And then as I decrease this, it gets bumpier and bumpier. And if you let it go much below one, things start to get pretty crazy. Um, so that looks like something pretty jagged. And that's already 0.5. If you go down to 0.4, it's just sort of all gets super spiky. In any event, the main point of this, again, is that uh, some simple processes, in this case working starting with a surface instead of a line, um, with a little bit of randomness and then iterated, can produce remarkably realistic looking uh, fractal landscapes. So what I just showed you about fractal landscape generation is just the tip of the iceberg. There's lots more that one can do, and there are much more fancy and involved programs that involve different shapes, uh, coloring, lighting, shading, and so on. Some of those programs are um, free downloads, so you can experiment more and read a lot more if you want. And I'll put links uh, to some of those resources in the section that's at the end of this unit. So rather than go deeper into fractal landscapes, um, we'll move on. Remember, the point of this unit is not to cover any one method of fractal generation in too much detail, but to give a broad survey, because the main goal of this is to show that there are lots of different ways of making fractals. So far, we've seen that um, iterated deterministic systems can produce fractals, and also iterated random systems can produce fractals. What we'll do next is look at a different type of random system that produces fractals. So we'll do that in the next subunit.